Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome to our online experience, man. Again, this is part five of Wise or Foolish. So we have been talking about building a lifestyle that leads yeah. to oil. Um, and it's more about the who than about the what, right? And so mm-hmm. we are talking about how in our secret place we are interacting with Jesus. You know, how do you interact with this man, Jesus, you mm-hmm. know? And so, man, we've talked about worship. We've talked about going in with Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. um, you know, which then, like I just said, we talked about worship last week. And then this week, man, I want to talk about something that I think that is a key to um, unlocking, man, our prayer life, which yeah. is uh, praying in tongues. Like, you know, praying in the spirit is the cheat code of <laughs> the believer. It is. This is this is like this is the thing that man that brings power, brings brings clarity, brings yeah. it literally it's it's the cheat code. It's I always when I when I teach on the on uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence speaking in tongues, it's like, man. God saw, man, our, our, our life. God saw all the all the things that we would go through. He says, hey, you know what? I'm going to give you this gift right here that will literally empower you to do, like, all things that, that you would go through. And so it's literally, I love this because it's... um. It's, it's seriously, it's a cheat code. That's the biggest thing I could ever say. It's a cheat code. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. I know that for me personally, praying in tongues has absolutely changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that I got super hungry for in high school because I grew up in an environment where praying in tongues was not normal. Um, it was actually really weird and really strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I was, originally I was taught that it was from the devil and all this other stuff like that. Mm. And I remember we came here and I saw it and I got so hungry for it. Wow. Um, so just, I could just see the difference in intimacy. Yeah. With people who had it and people who didn't have it. Yeah. You know, and not saying that one um, is better than the other one. But, you know, even as we were talking earlier today is that like. Dude, you read the New Testament and praying in the Spirit, praying it in tongues, is everywhere. Is everywhere. It's like everywhere. you cannot get away from it. Can't right? get away from it at and, all. And so, starting out, man, like let's like let's talk about like 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 what is praying in tongues? Like where does it mm. come from? Like, like like and all that stuff. Acts chapter two, verse four. Um, this is the first uh, uh, place where you see, man, the 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 evidence of praying in tongues. So. Even though, like, it's crazy because Jesus actually would, would 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 talk about like actually praying in tongues in the um, in the Gospels as well. But in Acts chapter two verse four says um, it says this as I open up my Bible. Oof. Acts two verse four. So it says this, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other language or other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So this day is the day of Pentecost. This is in Acts chapter two. And um, man, Jesus said to the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and power that comes from one high. Yeah. Right? That's Acts 1 8. Yeah. So 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 you have the disciples uh, in the upper room and they're waiting and whatnot. And uh, it's crazy. Bible says this, that they hear a mighty rushing wind and it fills this room and then tongues of fire starts appearing <laughs> above their heads and they start literally speaking in language that they have not been taught, that they didn't learn, but they started speaking in a tongue that actually, the Bible says this, that man, on the day of Pentecost, there was literally like a ton of different types of people of that were around uh, uh, the, the, really the world that have come to Jerusalem for this, uh, for this, for this day. And they were speaking in their own tongue, their own language. So literally the, the disciples are speaking in this language that they never were taught, but they're speaking in this language. They were magnifying God. And so literally right here, you see the evidence of when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, when that Holy, when the Holy Spirit literally filled yeah. uh, the room with the mighty rushing wind and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, that man, the evidence of, of them being filled with the Holy Spirit was speaking in this un of in this in this tongue. Yeah, man, this is crazy. So I think, man, that you could say because you know a lot of people is that we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I think we, I think we just um, glorify not glorify is the right word, but just point out tongues. 
And so, but I think that the right way to say it is that, I mean, the gift of praying in tongues I mean, is actually a result of of mm-hmm. the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that, man, when you look in the Bible and you got John chapter 14 and John chapter 16 um, in Acts 1, 8, like we just says, Jesus here, he's telling the disciples man, that he's going to send another mm-hmm. one who's just like him. And um, um, the, the word is parakletos or helper is that he's going to send mm-hmm. a helper who is the Holy Spirit who's going to come. Um, and then in Acts 1, 8, Jesus echoes that. Then in Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, man, we actually see it happening. Now, to kind of paint this picture, bro, because mm-hmm. this is crazy. I just had this thought, right? Mm. Like, imagine being somewhere, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, like, you start speaking German. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't yeah. know German, yeah. but, you know? Or, like, you start speaking Japanese, or, like, Arabic, or, yeah. you know, or, like, a language that you don't know. No. Like, like that's, that is exactly what happened here. Yeah. Is that these guys started speaking languages, men, that they don't know. Now, mm-hmm. that particular type of tongue is called tongues for the for unbelievers, unbelievers. Yep. where um, God fills you, and you begin speaking a literal um, another language um, and that is that is known around the world for whatever reason. To um, glorify God. Yeah, to glorify God. Yes. Um, but, the, but the tongues that we specifically want to focus on here is actually... Um, it's um it's it's um the tongues that you use for your own personal prayer time. It's, yes. It's it's um the tongues man. Where tongues you of your edification. Prayer closet. Yeah. It's, 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 the Bible calls it the tongues of edi- of edification. And we don't have a whole lot of time to, to dive deep into the different kinds of tongues and all that stuff like that. So we're actually putting a link in our bio for you to go and watch this amazing 12 minute message by John Mavere, and he breaks it down really really well and explains it. But we want to talk about what the Bible calls tongues for edification, mm-hmm. which is where God fills you up with your own supernatural prayer language, um, which is amazing. And so just like we think, man, um, I go to different areas in the world and they have languages. Well, did you know, man, that heaven has a language too? Yeah, come on. Heaven has a language too. And it's so cool because when you get filled with the Spirit, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you get this amazing evidence Right? Yeah. Because listen, like when you look all throughout the Bible, man, whether that's in Acts chapter 10 or Acts chapter 19, and when people were filled with the Holy Spirit, is that, man, there was clear evidence. Is that you read over and over again, man, that we saw and we heard. We saw and we heard. We yeah. saw and we heard. Is that there was evidence that there was that that that, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit had to, taken place. Mm-hmm. And so when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, what what we believe as a church. Um, is that the initial evidence yeah. of getting baptized in the Holy Spirit is a gift of speaking in tongues. Um, mm-hmm. And this is that personal tongue, man. This is that gift of edification. Um, or um, The word edification is a really churchy word to um, say. Um, the, the word means to, to build up or to yeah. strengthen. Okay. So, so we know that, man, living in this world, we, man, we can either live in the flesh or we can live in the spirit. I can live by... by, by Doing the things I want to do, you know, going back to my own sin nature, man, if, if anybody, shoot, you just got saved. You're just like, oh, my goodness, I'm saved. I love Jesus. But then you go to school or then you go home and then you go, you know, you're, you still have the same stuff around. You still have the same, like all the we get temptation, all this stuff. And it's really easy to like gratify and do the things that you used to do. But when it comes to man, this new reality that man, we get to live by and walk by the spirit. We get to walk yeah. in what Jesus has done. Uh, he didn't leave us to just do it in our own willpower. No, he actually gives us one, the power of the Holy spirit, but he gives us this gift of praying in the spirit that praying it in tongues, that man, this whole thing of, of, of edification, edification means this literally means to build and strengthen your spirit. So, yeah. man, how do I live and how do I walk like Jesus? I pray in the spirit. Yeah. Praying in the spirit, it comes, uh, comes back to whether it be praying in tongues or praying in the, uh, praying the word. But praying in tongues, there is something about when you pray in this, this language that, man, you might not know, but God knows. Yeah. You, that, that, that you weren't taught, but God knows. It's like having a, a line that only God can pick up. And that no, that that man that nobody can actually right like to yeah. to, it's that nobody can actually um um listen to it's but God. So man, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in this tongue is that man. I get a gift to help me pray. That's that's the that's the one of the main things that God gives us when 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 we get empowered and filled by the uh, by the Holy Spirit. That man, He gives us this gift to actually connect with Him. Yeah, I love it, man. And so just to kind of 
I know we just said a whole lot, <laughs> but um, to make it short, man, um, what is praying in tongues? Praying in tongues or the gift of tongues, it's a supernatural prayer language. Mm -hmm. It's a supernatural prayer language between my spirit and the spirit of God. Okay, my spirit and God, okay, um, that um, I get to pray in. And, and so why though, bro? Like, why should we pray in tongues? Because, you know, I think, man, that if we only pray in tongues at church, or if we only pray in tongues in the initial moment, because I know a lot of people, they say, man, oh yeah, man, I, I remember when I moment. was filled with the Spirit, <laughs> yeah. and there was that one moment back then where I said mm -hmm. some words that I didn't really understand. Yeah. And it's like, bro, like, listen, like, you're missing out on yeah. so much. You yeah. Know? So, like, I really want to talk about why we need to pray in tongues, because I think it's huge. Pray, praying in tongues, well, just looking at Scripture, um, I'm going to pull out pretty much, well, my, my favorite Scripture when it comes to, when it comes to praying in tongues is Jude uh, 20 through 21. It says this, but you, beloved, building yourselves up, meaning that whole thing, edification, but building yourselves up, being strong, uh, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on. And why? Because it keeps you in the love of God. Mm -hmm. Like, keeps you in, your, in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Praying in the Spirit keeps you in the love of God. Praying in the Spirit... Uh, actually leads you in the love of God. Praying in the Spirit shows you the love of God. Praying in the Spirit magnifies God and, 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 and makes God more real to you when you're actually doing this supernatural thing. There's this thing when it comes to when you pray in the Spirit that, man, that it leads you uh, uh, to, to his word. It actually, it, it makes, like, I love how, like, man, sometimes we want to want God, but we don't know how. Praying in the Spirit helps you want God. Yeah, come on. It's literally, uh, uh, the, the scriptures, it says, taste to see that the Lord is good. Yeah. And praying in the Spirit, there's something about man that it literally, re like, like, shifts my desires. It makes me want the things of God more. Yeah. It makes me want God more. It actually makes me want to walk like Jesus more. When I pray in the Spirit, I'm, the Bible says this in Romans 8. It says that I'm praying, I'm, I'm, that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for me. Literally, Romans 8, 26 says this. Likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. We've all been in situations where we don't know how to pray or don't know what to pray. But here's the fun thing about God. God has given us this gift to help us pray. It says this. Likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weakness for we do not know what we should pray or, or, or how to pray. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings we cannot be uttered like the Holy Spirit helps us when we don't pray. And when we open up our mouth and we pray in this tongue, it's literally God's praying through us the perfect will of God over our life. Yeah, it's so good, man. So kind of going back to that Jude verse um, is that it talks about how praying in the spirit, um, mm -hmm. that, it, that it builds us up. Yes. You know, um, you, know you guys praying in the spirit, it, it, it's, it's that edifies word. It literally what it means is that it strengthens you. You know, mm -hmm. I like to look at praying in tongues as a Holy Ghost gym. Okay, um, on, yeah. is that literally whenever I'm praying in tongues is that I'm building up my spirit, man. Um, because we know that there are three parts to us is that is that is that we are spirit, soul, we are soul, body. and we are body. Uh, okay, and that we know, man, that um, is that man, the Bible talks about in Galatians that our flesh and our spirit they're constantly at war with each yeah. other. And so, whenever I am praying in tongues, is that the Bible says is that I am strengthening or man, I am working out my spirit, man. Yeah. Listen, is that when I I pray in tongues, man, um, is that I'm strengthening myself, is that I'm making myself strong against the accusations of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Is it mean I'm making myself strong against the temptations of the enemy? Is it mean I'm making myself strong against the opinions of people? And what it does is it releases the grace and the anointing in my life to operate in a different spirit. Yeah. Like, like, listen, um, man, what do I mean by that? Is that whenever someone is coming against me, like, like, if someone is talking bad about me, right? Like if someone is gossiping about me, man, if they're sticking, if, if, if they're sticking knives in my back with their words or whatever, mm -hmm. like it is my natural reaction to want to punch back or to want to kick back or whatever. <laughs> or man, but what does yourself. God yeah. say? He says, listen, like I call you to bless those who curse you. So mm -hmm. what does praying in the spirit do, man? Like it makes me strong and it releases this anointing in my yeah. life, man, to love when I'm being hated. Yeah. Like, man, like, to show mercy when I shouldn't, right? Like, yeah. basically, it, 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 it releases this anointing in my life to begin to operate in the character of Jesus. Yeah, it keeps me in the love of God. 
Yeah. It legit does. It it makes me more like Jesus, even to the point when it comes to Ephesians six. We talk uh, uh, the, the the scripture that talks about us be having and putting on the armor of God, like mm -hmm. you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the, the belt of truth, the shoes of the gospel of peace. After all those, it says this: praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit, man, protects us from from the wiles of the enemy. Like, like, the, like praying the spirit, like, like, like enables us to actually walk a real holy life. Praying the spirit, man, if I got a sin issue, guess what? Praying the spirit, man, if I got an anger issue, guess what? Praying the spirit, man, if you don't know how, how, how to love people, praying the spirit, man, if you want to know who uh, uh, God deeper, praying the spirit. Paul said this, I pray in the spirit more than you all. He's talking to the uh, uh, whole church. And he's saying, hey, yo, that whole y'all, all of y'all. I pray more than y'all, than, than all of you combined. This dude, this dude, Paul prayed so much that this joker would end up writing two thirds of the New Testament. Come on. So, so man, how much more does does man praying in the Spirit man unlock literally the mysteries of God for us for yeah. our life? So, praying in the Spirit is again a cheat code. Yeah, and you can. Oh, go for yeah, it. I say, man, and just to piggyback real quick off what you just said. Is that like, I love it, man, is that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, is that when we pray in the spirit is that we like not only are we talking directly to God, mm -hmm. you know, like, listen, like if you want to say like, know that God is answering your prayers. Number one, pray the word. Number two, pray in the spirit. Yeah. Um, that meant he, he hears you. Is that the Bible says is that is that we have that direct line to God whenever we pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But also what happens is, is that um, it says that we are speaking out the mysteries of God is that when I pray in the spirit is that I'm creating an atmosphere of revelation around me. Yes. I'm creating an atmosphere of revelation. Is I mean, I'm creating an atmosphere for the revelation um, knowledge of who God is to hit me, man. Yeah. Of a uh, man of who He is, of who I am, yeah. of His thoughts That's towards really me. Good. Come on. I mean, about all this stuff, man. About His plans for me, man. Yeah. About people in my life that I need to pray for, um, mm -hmm. who um have um needs, you man. About nations. Yeah. Who have needs that man I need to pray for and yeah. all this other stuff like that. But but dude, like this is huge. Is that um like I am just releasing myself to walk in a deeper revelation. Like, and that's just not head knowledge, guys. When I say the word revelation, like I'm talking about a heart knowledge. Yeah. Like I'm talking about your heart grasping. Because listen, a lot of us know the word up here, but we but don't have, get it right here. Yeah. Like, yeah, listen, yeah. like, and if you want the word of God to make an 18-inch journey from your head to your heart, man, begin to pray in the spirit, my yeah. friend. Because yeah. I promise you, as you do, you're gonna release that atmosphere to begin to understand the mysteries of God. Listen, those mysteries um, are, are not mysteries that God is keeping from you there's mysteries that god has for you come on to reveal to you to show you so how how do you get filled with the holy spirit how do you receive okay, this gotcha gift? man i love this this is this is so good is that the bible says in luke 11 11 this is all we have to do is ask all you have to do is ask um is is that god makes it so clear he says listen like if you being um natural parents or normal parents like you know, if your son asked for a piece of bread, would you get, give him a rock? No. The obvious answer is no. It says, you know, um, if he asked for a fish, would you give him a snake? Mm -hmm. The obvious answer is no. Then he's saying, listen, if you being natural parents, like would give your kids gifts, how much more, Man. how much more will the father give you or give the Holy Spirit to those who ask yeah. him? Listen, God is wanting to give you the Holy Spirit. Like it is his heart and his desire Man, listen, come on. to those who ask him like you don't need to be at a certain level to receive the yeah, holy spirit that's you a know, lie like yeah. like like there's not this thing where it's like yo yo man i'm too jacked up yeah to receive um man the baptism of the holy spirit or i don't know enough tongues. yeah or or i don't know enough. It, it literally everything in god is based on faith everything so really for, here it all comes back to this first and foremost man i gotta know god you're good god you're really good yeah god you're you're my father God, you want to give you give me the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is then just say, God, I receive. It's like sometimes we think that, man, I have to do this. I have to do this. You don't have to. You just have to believe. You have to just have to believe and you have to ask. Yeah, that's so good. So you believe in ask, man. Um, and then after you ask, you um, you 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 need to um, just wait. You yeah. know, so listen. So it's going to look something like this saying, um, you know, 
Jesus, you, you know, the Bible says in Luke 3.16 that Jesus is the one who baptizes us with the, with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So Jesus, I thank you for baptizing me in the Holy Spirit and giving me the ability to speak in tongues. Yeah. That's it. That's it, it all you have yeah, to say. It ain't dramatic. It's, yeah. You don't have to wait for an altar. You don't have to wait for the, for the, for the worship. You don't, have to, you don't have to have the music in the background. Literally, you can go in your room right now, close your eyes, or even open your eyes. Say, God, man, I've been hearing about this Holy Spirit thing. God, I want it. God, God is so, so good. He gives you to you right there. Like it's it's not this thing that you have to uh, beg and plead. You just have to believe. Yeah, it's so good, man. And then so after you pray, listen. Like we like a lot of times we wait for this like crazy moment yep. where the Holy Spirit's gonna come in and grab my tongue and yeah, I'm gonna be like, shut up. You know, throw you into the that? third heaven, you're right on a cherubim. Yeah. Nah, dude. Not like this. No resistance. Like the Holy Spirit isn't gonna come like and wiggle your tongue for you. Is that you yeah. actually have to speak it out? Yeah. Now, this is you got like to. this is crazy. Okay, listen. Like, and the only way I know how to say this, guys, is that this is not a head thing. This is a faith thing. Yeah. Listen, this is this good. is a supernatural prayer language. And all I can tell you is this: is that, man, um, um, as you open up your mouth, is that it's gonna sound like gibberish is coming out of you. And you're going to be like, yo, like, what am I doing? What am I saying? You know, is, is that the Bible says, I believe in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. And that Paul says, listen, is that your mind is not going to understand what you're saying. Because once mm. again, guys, like I'm like, I'm speaking a language of heaven, you know, and there are moments, man, where um, I may have an idea of what I'm praying about. Yeah, and, um, it's cool. And um, it may lead me to the word. But um, also, like, um, like, there's a lot of times where I'm not going to 100% know, like, what I'm saying. In fact, there are a majority so of the times where I have no clue what I'm saying. But what I do know is that the Bible says, once again, in 1 Earth Corinthians 14, is that I'm speaking out those mysteries of God. Yeah. I'm speaking out those mysteries of God. And so what I'm saying is, is, is completely of God. It's completely mm -hmm. from heaven. Okay. Um, why? Because this, because when I pray in the spirit, you have to get this friend. You have to get this. When I pray in the spirit, I'm praying the perfect will of God. It's true. When you pray in the spirit, you are praying the perfect will of God. It's true. That's, yeah. that's also what the Bible says in first Corinthians chapter 14. Okay. So, so listen, it's going to sound like gibberish when it is coming out. Um, but once again, it's supernatural, man. It's like, you got to trust yeah. God. And, and, and here's the thing. It's like, I just said this, but it's not the head. It's not a head thing. Is that the Bible says in John is that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah. So this is the thing right. where you got to leave your head. Okay. You got to leave yeah. your head in the best way that I can describe it to you. This, this may sound completely crazy. Okay. But it's going to come from within. It's almost like it's going to bubble up and just flow out of you. Mm. Okay. Um, because it's, it's that thing that's coming out of you. Right. Um, and so that's it. Like, it's that easy. It's, it's that hard. simple. Just okay? it's by faith. That's yeah, all. It's by faith. And we really want to challenge you guys as we close this video today. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that take every single day praying tongues for 15 to 20 minutes yeah praying tongues for 15 to 20 minutes a day and watch and watch how your prayer life how your relationship with God just goes mm -hmm. to a brand new level as you engage with Jesus through praying in the spirit because once yeah. again everything we're talking about we're not giving you a checklist we're giving you ways to actually engage with Jesus in your secret place mm. friends you have to pray in the spirit yeah. you have to pray in the spirit pray in the spirit every single single day yeah. all right and i want to challenge you do it for 15 to 20 minutes and watch how things shift and change in your life and i also want to say this in closing listen you have control okay you can pray when you want to where you want to and why you want to mm -hmm. okay i know people who say yeah like once again yo like i remember when i prayed in that moment back in church and like they never use it since and they think it's this thing where like i have to feel it yeah, or whatever guys no like it's listen i can pray in tongues on on command mm -hmm. why because it's a gift yeah and because it's a gift that god gave to you you can use it when you want to where you want to and why you want to it's your gift and it's up to you to use it as much as you can and mm -hmm. as much as you want to okay and so we'll leave you with this saying okay the more you pray in tongues the more you become like jesus yeah sorry let's pray into that so i just want you to close your eyes open your hands like you're about to receive something come on holy spirit yeah God, you see every single person, Lord, that hasn't uh, received this gift and who wants it. God, you're a good dad. You're a father. You, you, you're a father who lavishes us with love and you empowers us 
with your Holy Spirit. So in this moment, God, we receive you. Matter of fact, if you, you might be in your room right now, I just want you to say, God, I receive you. Holy Spirit, baptize me. Baptize me. Fill me from head to toe. Fill me from head to toe. Come on, Holy Spirit. God, I thank you right now, Lord, that out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Thank you, Jesus. Come right on. here, right now. God, I thank you right now, Lord, just for visitations of God and, and, and baptisms right now in the name of Jesus. God, we love you and we honor you. And we thank you, God, that this is a gift that we, that we don't strive for or that we don't work for, but you give freely. We bless you. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you so, so much for joining us today for the online experience when talking about praying mm -hmm. in tongues. I love this subject. Yeah. I'm passionate about this subject because it's shifted and changed my life. Yeah. So we'll see you next week, man, as we further talk on how to engage um, Jesus and how to interact with him in the sacred place. So I love you guys. See you next week. Bless.